Hi folks. So recently I've been using the orthographic camera quite a lot and I realised that I've just been kind of eyeballing it to set it up without really understanding what the settings mean. So I thought for once I would take the time to really understand what it all meant and I'm going to share what I learned here. So before I start, I'm just going to have a quick little explanation of what an orthographic camera is. So I'm just going to bring up this for a second. A normal camera works by collecting light from the scene onto the lens. And the amount of light that it collects depends on the shape of the lens and the basically the construction of the lens. So different lenses will, will have a different field of view. But anyway, it collects the light and then via the lens, it will focus the lens, the light down and will be picked up on the sensor of a digital camera or in the old days of a, a piece of film in an analog camera. So orth orthographic cameras work quite differently. The way they work is that the, <coughs> excuse me, the, the sensor is actually the same size as the scene you're trying to capture, which sounds kind of strange, but basically imagine that it will only, an orthographic sensor will only collect light rays that hit it at 90 degrees. So in this scene here above, it clicks lights like this. And in this scene here below with a much smaller sensor, it will only create, collect this light. It's basically light rays that travel in parallel. So in a way you could think of it as it shoots the light ray out, it bounces off whatever's in the scene, and then it comes back. And that's what it registers. So orthographic um, sensors and cameras don't really exist in the real world because even to capture a, a small scene like this would need an absolutely huge sensor. And can you imagine you're trying to capture a, um, a landscape, which is maybe two kilometers wide by uh, a kilometer or 500 meters high, then you need to have a sensor that's two kilometers wide and half a kilometer high. So with that out of the way, I'm going to start by doing control alt number pad zero to take our view into camera view. And over here, I'm going to select our orthographic camera. So the first thing we see here is that we have this value here of orthographic scale, which at the moment is at 7.3. If I pull out the ruler and measure, we see that we have 7.3. If I change this to something else, then again, the measurement matches. So we might say, well, that's easy enough. This value is simply our camera frame. It's the, it's the width on the X axis of our camera frame. But that's actually not quite the whole story. If I go up here to these settings here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start increasing the resolution on the Y. Let's just get rid of these, get rid of this ruler. I'm going to start increasing the value on the Y and you see that it starts getting taller, the frame. So if I can just type in 1920 here, we have a square frame. So you might imagine that if I start to 
or if I increasing the width in the Y, it's just going to keep getting taller and taller. But what happens is instead it starts getting narrower and narrower. And when I was first playing with this, I just couldn't get my head around what was going on here. And if I now match the number on the X, we have a square again. And if I go this way, it gets smaller. So it's kind of, it's kind of strange. And then I realized that what this, this number here, this orthographic scale means, it just means, well, put it this way. The, this value here is not telling us anything about the size. All it's doing is it's telling us the shape. So if we put in this, a thousand by a thousand, I'm just going to change the orthographic scale back down to one and then just pull out a little bit. This should be a thousand here. If I put this here, we have one meter. And let's just put this to say 19, 20 by 10, 80. <clears throat> now our longest value is the X and it's still a thousand. We can swap it around. 1920 to 1080. And now our Y is one meter, which is set here. So that's 1920 to 1080. I could even do something very strange, which was to make it by four pixels, by four pixels. And even then we still have a frame of one meter. And if I was to render this out, you see we've got a, a fantastic render here of four pixels by four pixels. So the key takeaway from this part of the video is that The settings here in the resolution are purely telling us the shape of our rectangle and the orthographic scale looks at the shape, chooses the longest value and makes that value whatever you have here. So if you have five meters here, the longest value is five meters. If you have 0.1, then it's 0 0.1. All right, the last thing I want to talk about is loading in images and having them fit to the shape of your orthographic camera or having the orthographic camera fit to the shape of the images. So I'm going to delete the monkey. I'm going to pull in an images planes. And I'm going to go here and load in this image. I'm going to scroll down to the settings here. And if you don't see the settings, it's, it's right here. And what we want to do is we want to, I'm, lo I'm, I'm looking at top down. So I want to have the Z up. And the height is going to be one meter. Now, what's a little bit of a shame is that you're not here able to choose width one meter. And you'll see why in a minute that's a bit annoying. That's just the way it is. You only have a choice of, of height. So it's going to be loaded, loaded in with this height here being one meter. And we can just check that to see if it's true. And that is true. It's one meter. Okay. So let's again go into an orthographic camera and I just need to center it because I moved it just now. Okay, 
So let's put our author orthographic camera on and we're going to put our orthographic scale to one. Okay. Now it doesn't fit. Now, why is that? Well, the first problem we have is we have a mismatch of, um, f of f image size to image frame. The frame is, is the typical 16 to 9 uh, aspect ratio of 1920 1080, but our image up here has got a different size. So <clears throat> we're not going to ever have these matching until we have the same shaped rectangle as we do in the image with our frame. So I'm going to go to here and I'm just going to match these up. So this by this, okay, it's getting a bit closer. Now, what we want to do is for the orthographic scale, we're going to type here our width, which is 19, 1,119. We're going to divide it by 750. And you see that now we have an orthographic scale of this. Okay. So what is important to know, again, just to, just to reiterate, is that, again, this is not anything to do with size. This is shape. So I could do here, divided by 53, and we get this crazy thing. And then I do this, divided by 53, and we get this. So as long as we keep the aspect ratio the same, our frame will fit. And again, I render this out and you see that we have a pixelated image. Okay. Let's go back to where we were. Okay. Now, if we want to change our size of image, we could do that here by just multiplying it. So one times 3.55, just a random number. And then we just do this times 3.55. And again, we have the correct shape. And of course, remember always that this value here is always giving us the measurements on the longest size side. Yeah, so I think that pretty much covers it. I hope somebody found this useful. Anything I missed out, maybe put it in the uh, in the comments. And that's it. Take it easy.